Well, hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of The Greg and Lisa Show. I'm Greg. And I'm Lisa. And our topic today is Christmas holiday traditions. You know, until we started doing some research, we really didn't realize how many yeah. holiday traditions are out there. And sometimes we get stuck in a bubble and just do our own little thing and we don't, you know, get creative or get past that. But Greg, do you remember uh, any holiday traditions or Christmas traditions from when you were growing up? You know, um, my parents, we would always, uh, for whatever reason, that's the, the evening, Christmas Eve, we would make pizza homemade put our own little toppings on it and that just uh i know that's unusual but well, it, that's, it became a thing well that's cool yeah well when i was growing up we were we lived in a two-story house and every year we had to stay at the top of the steps and one of us kids only got to go down and turn the tree lights on and see the presents first okay. and after that then we all got to go down and you know look at the christmas well, tree that is and, and, and open up the gifts. So it was always a special treat if you were the child that got to go down first and turn on the tree lights because it was dark and all the tree lights would sparkle. That's so, very neat. Cool. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we asked a lot of our friends and family different questions about their holiday traditions. And I've listed some of their responses and a big one from being in this portion of the state as a lot of them, my friend Donna and Elisa and I myself, we went down to O'Neill's and Polsky's downtown to look at all the Christmas windows. And that was a huge draw. Um, Donna said she, when she was little, she had to squeeze in between all of the people just to get close enough wow. to see the window. <laughs> but, cool. And at that time, my mom didn't drive and we had to ride the bus downtown. But that was a special mm -hmm. treat and you got to go into the Santa land. Um, my daughter said she remembered, you know, baking cookies. That was always a big family event. We'd make a ton of different cookies. Um, my brother said he remembered the Christmas tree being put up on Christmas Eve. Oh, well, waited that long, huh? Yeah, that was before my time. <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> when I came along, or as I got older, my mom and I used to put the Christmas tree up. But one of my friends shared that Denise, that when she found the Lord as her Lord and Savior in 2008, and realized that Christmas was about the birth of Jesus and it was his birthday, her heart exploded and, and with joy and that was her best Christmas ever. Now, these are all good, but there there are some memories that we as adults really uh, we can't share because little ones might be listening to this and we, we certainly don't want to spoil no, anything. No, we do not. But we're gonna go through our list of traditions that we found and some of them will resonate with you um, just as they did with us. Uh, so just listen to yeah, what some and of buckle the things up, folks. This found. is a list. <laughs> yeah, two or three pages worth of list. <laughs> All right, let's so, do this thing. Yep. All right. Uh, Christmas Eve church service, yeah. decorating the tree, baking cookies, writing letters to Santa. Yep. Drive around and look at Christmas lights. Make a gingerbread house. And go Christmas caroling. And did you know that the first Christmas song that was ever in space in 1965 was Jingle Bells? And the original title for Jingle Bells was One Horse Open Sleigh. And it was originally created as a Thanksgiving song, not a Christmas song. But Christmas caroling was actually based on wassailing. Wow, okay. Yeah. And next, you know, traditions, we all do like this one, exchange gifts. How about... Uh, Wear ugly Christmas sweaters, um, celebrate Advent at church, Christmas parties, visiting Santa. Yeah, that's always a highlight. Sending Christmas cards. And I know the, the postage has really gone up and that tradition is kind of going by the wayside. But the sending Christmas cards actually started in 1843 by Sir Henry Cole. And he was a civil servant. And he was helping to establish the post office. So he encouraged people to send cards at one shilling each. Wow. You want me to do this next yeah, one? Yeah, you... fine. Let's do the next one. All right. So uh, <laughs> this is not one I did, but it's one we found. Uh, it's called Hide the Pickle. And the first child to find the pickle hidden on the Christmas tree on Christmas morning gets an extra present. Now, I, you know. I don't know if I'd ever put a pickle on a Christmas tree, but perhaps if there was an extra present in it for me, I would 
I would think about it. Yeah, you probably would look for I it. Would, I would yeah. go for it. I actually heard um, someone on the radio talk about this today. They talked about it's supposed to be a German-American tradition. That makes sense. They yeah. originally gave the Germans the credit, but as they did more research, they found it was really German-American. Okay. And we've never done the hide the pickle either. Um, but spider webs, and I found this interesting that it's an Eastern Europe, European Christmas decor, and a spider web on your Christmas tree is considered good luck. And what happened a long time ago, there was a poor widow who didn't have any decorations on their tree. She couldn't afford them. And when they came down Christmas morning, there was a lot of spider webs all over the tree, and it was like the spiders were taking care of them. And you know how spider webs glisten oh, yeah. when the light oh, hits yeah. them? Well, that's how the tradition started, was from there. Yep, yeah. and then uh, just moving on on the list here, some other ones. You can pick a festive theme. Uh, you can watch Christmas movies, have a movie marathon even. Uh, mistletoe, um, Elf on the Shelf, if you like to mess up your own house and blame it on something you bought. <laughs> Elf on the Shelf is for you. Um, listen to Christmas music. Uh, matching family PJs. Um, that's one I'm trying to prevent as long as I can. And then uh, Advent calendars. Yeah. That's one That's one we did. You know, uh, I didn't really grow up in the church or anything, but we still had Advent calendars from time to time. There's a little piece of candy or something yeah. like that. In yeah, there. it was kind of like a countdown to yeah. Jesus' yeah. birthday. Yeah. Yep. We, this is one we used to do when my kids were little. We would go out to a Christmas tree farm and we would cut down our own tree every year. Uh, we would donate toys for tots. Yeah. We'd participate in a tree lighting festivity. Attend a Christmas parade. And I know a lot of holiday crafters like this one to visit a holiday craft show or a holiday market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, obviously buy in poinsettias. Um, Make holiday crafts with family and friends. Um, secret Santa giveaways. Um, opening one gift on Christmas Eve. I always thought that was cheating. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, yeah, I, we we did that once or twice. It, it yeah. just it didn't really, you know, it, it never really yeah. stuck. But I kind of thought that was for lazy people that didn't want to get up early in the morning on Christmas and open their gifts. Well, I, <laughs> they wanted to sleep. Even in. at that, even if you're late, just <laughs> sleep in anyway. You can yeah. sleep in and still not open the gift the day before. Yeah. Um, well. You know, so teaching kids about gift giving, um, having a Christmas wreath, and, you know, this actually represents Jesus. Do you want to talk a little more about that? Yeah, it said that the Christmas wreath represents Jesus Christ. Um, the evergreens is because evergreens are everlasting and they maintain their color. And usually the holly berries that are on it also represents Jesus' blood. But you also establish gift-giving rules, cookie exchanges. You volunteer at soup kitchens or food banks. You make a Yule log. And you know what a Yule log is, don't you? <laughs> it's, 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 it's sort of like a cake-ish type of... It is. It's kind of like a big ho-ho. Yeah, yeah. With I, log I, I knew it was sort of a cakey yeah. type of thing. But yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so. You know, you can read the Christmas story, uh, the story of Jesus, the Christmas story, capital right. T. Um, drink hot cocoa. Attend a midnight mass. Um, read uh, the Christmas story throughout the Christmas season, season and on Christmas Eve. Um, add a new ornament to your tree. Make paper snowflakes. That's a good uh, project for the kids to do and hang around your house. Some people go ice skating. They take family Christmas photos, uh, Christmas breakfast together, and a lot of people celebrate Christmas with cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning. Uh, cinnamon rolls, to me, are an all-season thing, really. Yeah. <laughs> Cinnamon's one of my things. You put cinnamon in it, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm all over it. Yeah. You get out the nutcracker and try to use it. <laughs> you start a new holiday collection with the themes and towns that people do with the little villages. That's really neat. Yeah. Uh, you know, this holiday season, Christmas, is a time, good time to pass on a family heirloom. Uh, pass down family recipes. Um, make snow angels. Play uh, Christmas games. Uh, you know, visit a live nativity. Attend Christmas programs. Uh, you know, count down to Christmas. Participate in an angel tree. And for those that don't know what an angel tree is, usually it is a tree that has gifts on it that families in need um, can use to help them celebrate the holidays. Yep. And, and a lot of churches have some version of this that they, they do. That they they do, adopt so. a family or yeah. there's the ones where you adopt um, 
children of people that are incarcerated uh, to help them celebrate the holidays. Um, there is one that I never heard of before. It was called Fill the Manger with Straw. And basically what that is, is every time that you do something nice during the holiday season or a random act of kindness, you put a piece of straw in the manger. And the theory is, is that you try to get that manger full of straw and hay before the Christ child is born. Wow. Um, you know, another one, um, making candy canes or Christmas candy. Um, and, you know, our little bit of history on candy canes, I can't believe this, but they were actually invented to keep kids quiet in church. Um, in 1670, a German choir master asked a sweet shop owner to make sweets in the shape of a shepherd's hook uh, for children at church to keep them quiet during church festivities. So you heard that right. Um, candy, a certain kind of candy, was invented to stop kids from talking in church. Yep, keep them occupied. <laughs> keep their mouths going so they're eating and not talking yeah, and being crazy yeah. uh you know also you can call santa and leave him a message there are a lot a couple different uh, free phone numbers to go and do that yeah. um attend a christmas yep. concert participate in the 12 days of christmas i know my sister-in-law does the 12 days of christmas with her two granddaughters and every day they get to open up a little tiny gift every day That's and neat. they celebrate the 12 days of christmas sure. Okay. Yeah. You can exchange Christmas ornaments, exchange Christmas socks, make Christmas luminaries. You can deliver a dinner box to someone anonymously. You just kind of deliver them dinner, knock on the door and leave it there and go about your business. It, it's it's ding dong ditch with generosity in it. Yeah. Or you can <laughs> even just pay for it and have DoorDash or Uber yeah, or... Yeah. or Grubhub, you know, deliver it yep. to them. Because and, and, a lot of those you can prepay, yeah. leave the tip right on there. Right. They just leave it at the house and, yep. and, and they then, go and you don't yeah. even have to sign anything. So yep. there's, yep. And you can just tell them Merry Christmas from somebody, a secret Santa. You know, somebody that was thinking about you during the holidays. And that's something nice to do for those that don't have somebody yeah. that maybe that can't, you know, celebrate with their families normally because they're out of town. Um, you can do a, you know, other things we can do a sibling gift exchange, a family talent show, charades or Pictionary, but uh, I refuse to play Uno because somebody cheats. Oh, cheat. Yeah. There's you, grandma's you, rules. Right. It's house rules. They're not really grandma's. These, They're house these rules. These come up <laughs> at the most convenient of times. Um, I just follow the rules. That's what it is. So, moving on. So we've got, uh, you can do stockings for Jesus. Um, you can do blessing bags. You can roast chestnuts on an open fire or the stove. Um, my, have uh, fun with that one with Well, yeah. yeah. Well, my dad loved chestnuts. And we never roasted them on an open fire. That was something that my dad and I did. He, We would cook them on the stove. And he would put a an X in them as he roasted them and then we would peel them when they were ready and if I, if I go up and suggest that to your daughter she'll think I've gone chestnuts <laughs> <laughs> she might I don't know <laughs> um, hanging stockings mm -hmm. we use festive chair covers electric trains around the Christmas tree um, they showed somebody in New York actually in a parking garage this year it was on the news this morning set up a big Christmas display and has all the trains and people cool. where you could see it. And it's a really big event every year that they look forward to. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can also display a nativity set, have Christmas Eve parties, dinners with family and friends, play games for fun, but not Uno, uh, string popcorn garland for the Christmas tree, um, flock a Christmas tree, or uh, put snow on your windows. Did you ever do that? No. But that's pretty fun. That's probably a vintage thing. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you used to get the canned snow yeah. and you put stencils on your window and you spray it so that there's snow on your windows and there's a different design on it. Uh, you get out the bubble lights. Have you ever had bubble lights on your Christmas tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You watch the Christmas story. There's a lot of Christmas story movies. The Christmas story, the Christmas star. Um but, you know, red and green has a symbol of its own. We kind of touched base on it a sure. little bit ago. But um, red is the blood of Jesus and green is the evergreen that's representing eternal life as it stays green throughout the winter. Also, leaves and the holly berries embody the crown of thorns on Jesus' head on the cross. Right. Um, you know, 
other just little fun you know, Christmas facts here and what these things represent. Uh, the angel topper uh, represents the angel Gabriel. Um, the star, you know, if you put that on top, represents the star of Bethlehem. On the 12 days of Christmas, it took the kings 12 days to reach baby Jesus. And that's where the 12 days of Christmas started. And then it was carried forward, too, that you're not supposed to take your tree down until 12 days after Christmas, which is January 6th. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, in France, uh, people come together in cathedrals and churches across the country uh, to pray and sing carols, uh, chants de Noel. Uh, if you speak French and just heard me do that, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, they celebrate the birth of Jesus by doing that. So um, that's, you know, awesome. Um, in Mexico, they celebrate Christmas from December 12th through January 6th. Um, they have fun, dancing, lots of celebration, uh, 12 days before the 25th, of course, and uh, the 12 days after, kind of as we just touched on. Right. Yeah, and it's a big celebration for them. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the reason it's uh, the 12 days of Christmas. But the Italian-Americans, they a lot of times celebrate the Feast of the Seven Fishes, so they eat seven different seafoods on a Christmas Eve. Um, Chris Kringle, um, you know, the name for uh, Santa that we, we know, uh, was actually derived from Christkindl, which uh, the German word for uh, Christ child. And if you uh, are German or speak German and heard me do that, I'm sorry. Um, and I didn't know this one. Um, Santa is approximately 1,743 years old. Um, who was born in modern day Turkey in 280 AD. Yeah. And Santa makes 842 million stops on Christmas Eve, and he has over 200,000 elves that help him get pres presents ready. Which is impressive on those elves because 842 million to 200,000 is that's a, that's not a good ratio for the elves. No, it's not. But you know, that number keeps going up every year. Sure. <laughs> and Santa Claus. At St. Nicholas Day is December 5th, and when Santa Claus leaves a small gift or a sweet poem in the shoes of Dutch children. And there is so much more that we cannot cover everything all at one time, but maybe next year we'll continue sure. this yeah, there's list. There's a bunch more stuff. Right. Um, but, but, oh, go ahead. I please. just wanted to say yep. the next things that we're going to talk about, I found out on the internet. So it was pretty interesting, too. And the, and this first one is 10 ways to have a happier Christmas when you are not feeling very merry. Yep. So um, you can make a new family if you have experienced a loss, et cetera. And you want to talk a little more about what you mean by make a new family? Well, you know, if you don't have people to spend the holidays with, you might want to adopt a family yep. that could be from the church or people that you work with or um, your friends. It's kind of just, you know, goes back to making that new tradition that we kind of yep. talked about in grief and depression and anxiety um, to try and help you, you know, get moving. You could become a secret Santa and leave cookies and cards at your neighbors or under windshield wipers. You could leave a holiday card. Uh, one year we were shopping at one of the local thrift stores and my daughter-in-law found a Christmas card on a shelf in one of the thrift stores. And it had a $10 bill in it and the Christmas card and it just had a nice little note, um, you know, wishing you a Merry Christmas. And it was something that was totally unexpected. So that's something to think about that you can do, too. Uh, you can list all the things that you, you know, that are wonderful in your life. Um, get up, get dressed, and get out. Um, you know, that doesn't mean you have to go among all the craziness at the stores, but just, you know, get out there. Um, do what you love. Um, be your own funk breaker. Uh, paint, dance, swim. I don't know about swimming in Northeast Ohio in December, but... Oh, you got the natatoriums. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they could do that, yes. Yeah. Uh, volunteer, climb, run. You know, I, I never understood running, moving as fast as you could for an extended period of time. I, you know, I don't know how kids I've do it. I've never been yeah. a runner either. But, but, but you may. You may like that. And yeah. more power to you if you are. That's right. You can make it fun, play music, invite friends over, play games, you know, dance. Just put on some of that, that toe tap and music and just start dancing around the house. Yeah. 
you can celebrate the season with forgiveness. We are supposed to forgive 70 times 7 according to the Bible. So start this season with a clear mind and an open heart. Now, I've always wanted to ask somebody this, so get ready. Okay. So 70 times 7, 490, does that mean we don't have to forgive somebody 491 times? Oh, no, you just have to keep going. It's kind of the way. I, yeah. I always saw that math in the Bible as, as the Lord's way of saying, oh, just a bajillion, just keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to serve somewhere or volunteer somewhere? Connect with the deeper meaning of Christmas, the birth of Christ. It really is the best gift of all. And put yourself on Santa's nice list and buy yourself a present. What, which will help him out because as you saw, he has 842 million stops and only 200,000 elves. So, Well, one of my brothers used to buy himself a Christmas present every year. He would go Christmas shopping usually on Christmas Eve, and he would yeah. always buy himself a Christmas yeah. present. So now the next section is about Grinchy people. You know, we kind of talked about the ones that how to have a happier Christmas when you're not feeling very merry. Sure. Well, this is about Grinchy people. And we all know the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas. Well, there are some Grinchy people, and that's okay. Not everyone loves Christmas. And... I bought a couple signs and I have them displayed at my house. And one says, it's beginning to cost a lot like Christmas. And another one says, if you're not merry, leave. Um, and I have another one for the grandkids. It says, that's it. I'm calling Santa. <laughs> but there was one that Roy L. Smith penned. And it says, he who has not Christmas in his heart will not find it under a tree. That is, that is so true. But, um, mm. you know, the good news for Grinches is, is there is help for Grinches. So uh, you, you can get support. Um, find other Grinchy people to hang with. And, and uh, to me, that sounds silly, but it really does. You, you'll get together and, you know, if it can be kept from being too negative, you know, it. I think if you get together with people who are feeling the way you feel, it usually... Well, you can all sit around and complain about Christmas together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it doesn't result in the betterment of everybody, you can all just... Yep, yeah, and at least you're around yeah, like-minded folk. That's right. <laughs> uh, be strategic. You can say no to some things. You you know, that that's okay, and there's a right way to do that. Yeah. And fake it till you make it. It's practice being not grinchy and become a Christmas lover. Hide your grinchiness and make people wonder what happened to you. Um, you know, you can also stand up for yourself and let people know that you don't like Christmas, and there may be reasons for it. Um, you, you just don't need to spoil it for others, but you you know, you do still have the right, you know, you've, you've lived your life, you have the right to feel the way you feel. Yeah. But also be kind to yourself. Reduce the stress activities on your list. Chill and watch how the Grinch stole Christmas. And there's a saying that my mom would always say, this too shall pass. And that's right. Christmas passes every year and it returns in another 12 months. But, um, you know, all kidding and fun aside, um, you know, we both know that Christmas, it, it, it is a fun time of year. It's not just for the kids, but for adults. But it's just not it's not just about Santa Claus and presents. Um, yet as Christ followers, you know, we need to sow the seeds uh, that people can relate uh, to whether it's through Christmas carols or Christmas displays, um, you know, as you do with the grandkids. Um, Grandma, why do you have your Christmas trees up, especially when it's not Christmas? So you do leave that thing up year round. Um, to, I do. And, and it, you know, it helps to remind us, you know, we were given the best uh, gift of all, the birth of a Savior who was born and then sacrificed on the cross for our sins. That's right. And, you know, we are supposed to love one another 365 days a year and always love our neighbors. And it is a constant reminder. And it's proven studies out there. People are nicer and more generous at Christmas time. And it's like, why? Why can't they carry that through the rest well, of the year? Yeah, you know, and, and as far as discipleship works and spreading the gospel goes, um, for whatever reason, people around Christmas are more receptive. So mm -hmm. if there's a conversation you've been waiting to have, you know, obviously you know who your people right. are that need to have those conversations. You know what the right time is. But I, I would just say that Christmas might be a good time. It is, but you have to carry that throughout the whole year. Yes, you And do. that's what you yep. have to remember. Uh, we are supposed to love one another. We're supposed to be generous and kind. We're supposed to love them more than ourselves. Yes. And that's why I leave my Christmas tree up all year round, yep. is to remind the kids that Christ was born. And even though he died and he rose again, 
to save us from our sins. And that's one of the important things and lessons that they need to learn. Uh, we're going to close with a Christmas story poem. And it was written by Dave Trenholm. And he has a website. It's called From the Ground Up. And he adapted it from the family-friendly Christmas Eve worship from the Presbyterian Church in Canada. And I want to read this and share this with you this Christmas yeah. season. Uh, you, you want to take Go yeah. ahead. Yep. On a night long ago in a place far away, a baby was born on the first Christmas day. His name was Jesus, and he was a king, and he came to the world to change everything. This morning, we'll look at the story and see the baby that came because he loved you and me. We'll hear about angels and wise men and sheep and the manger in which baby Jesus could sleep. It's a story that's crazy, amazing, and true. It's the story about how much God loves you. So let's listen carefully as we tell the story and let's worship Jesus, the great King of glory. Mary and Joseph were tired and sore. They had traveled all day and could travel no more. They finally arrived in Bethlehem town, only to find there was nowhere to lie down. The hotels were all full and there were no more beds for Mary and Joseph to lay down their heads. Exhausted from walking and ready for sleep, they would even be willing to sleep with the sheep. They asked a kind man if they could sleep in his hay, in the barn with the animals where the cows lay. The man showed them a spot and moved the cows over. For a pillow, he gave them a pile of clover. And Mary and Joseph sat down with a sigh. It wasn't the best, but it was warm and dry. And they slept for a while under the stars and the moon, perhaps unaware that Christ's birth would be soon. While the whole town was sleeping with stars shining bright, Mary's baby was born on the first Christmas night. Born in a barn with the horses and hay. If you were a king, would you come that way? The king of creation had come to the earth, and a Bethlehem barn was the place of his birth. I think I'd choose a palace, but God's ways are stranger. And God's son was born and laid down in a manger. Yes, Jesus was born and wrapped in some cloth, and for the first bed, he was placed in a trough. Outside of the town, round the fire so bright, some shepherds were watching their sheep in the night. The night had been quiet and silent and still. The sheep had been starting to doze off until, when all of a sudden a radiant light surprised all the shepherds and gave them a fright. An angel appeared and said not to fear, for the Savior was born, the Messiah was here. He'd be wrapped up in cloth and placed in a manger. Go see for yourself, he's a total game changer. He brings joy to the world, he's good news for men. The angel said this to the shepherds, and then a thousand more angels appeared in the sky. They sang praises to God in the heavens so high. What a huge celebration of joy to the earth as the shepherds were told of their dear Savior's birth. When the angels had left them alone with their sheep, there was no way those shepherds would fall back asleep. Let's go to the town, the shepherds all said, and see if a manger is really the bed. Of this new little king who was born here tonight, so the shepherds all ran to the town with delight. They arrived in the village and looked all around. It didn't take long till the baby was found. It was just as the angel had told them before. They found Mary and Joseph and Jesus. What's more? Jesus lay in the manger. The story was true. The Savior had come. So what did they do? Those shepherds went out and they told the whole town. They told them how God, as a baby, came down, was born in that barn, and yet was the king the Savior from heaven, as the angels did sing. It wasn't long after some wise men came by. They had followed a star that appeared in the sky. They knew that a king had been born for the Jews. So they stopped at the place of Herod, the palace of Herod for clues. Where is the new king, they wanted to know. Bethlehem was the answer, and so they did go. They followed the star till it came to the place 
where they found little Jesus, oh, the joy on their face. They offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Mary couldn't believe what was happening to her, for her little baby was clearly a king. He was worshipped, adored, and caused angels to sing. He was someone so special, in fact was divine. He would surely change her life, change your life and mine. For small baby Jesus would grow to a man, would live without sin, and would follow God's plan. He would die on a cross, but would rise three days later to trade all my sin for something much greater. And that's the true story of how Christ was born. We have so much to celebrate on this Christmas morn. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only dear son for each person to save. By trusting in Jesus, our sins are forgiven. We have eternal life, the promise of heaven. And all because Jesus was born on that night, the high king of heaven came to make all things right. Is this the part where you want me to light a match while recording a video in my own home? No, it's too late. We were going to do that before we read the story. Okay, good. <laughs> yep. Anyways, we know the true meaning of Christmas yes. is Christ's birth. Regardless of matches or vanilla cupcake candles. Yes. And that we want you to remember that as you celebrate Christmas with your yes. family. May you have a blessed holiday. And may the peace of God be with you as you celebrate Christ's birth. Yep, and, and I guess, you know, that's, that's it. it for us this time. Yeah. We will um, see you on the next episode. And uh, as always, the comments, uh, the email, uh, the Greg and Lisa show at gmail.com. Uh, you found us on YouTube. Uh, you know, we're with the Greg and Lisa show. Also on Facebook is the Greg and Lisa show. So if you have any questions or want to talk about any of this, let us know. Yep. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.